It is about the life of Srila Raghunath Dash Goswami. So we pray that this attempt may be successful to please His Divine Grace and all these subtle Vaishnavas. Hare Krishna. O oh, gentle Vaishnavas, please come with me. I want to show you something quite extraordinary. The year is 1510, and the place is the village of Chandpur, near Saptagram, West Bengal. Let us give our full attention to the words of Hiranya and Govardhan Majumdar who in spite of their fabulous prosperity are sharing their deep concern and anxiety about the 15-year-old boy, Raghunath Das. My dear Govardhan, your son Raghunath is a good and exemplary boy. He is very, very high in spiritual understanding due to his association with our family priest, Balaram Acharya as well as our Gurudev, Yadananda Acharya. What's more, he is very dear to Srila Haridas Thakur, whose devotion to Sri Krishna is unparalleled. All this is, is well and good, but ever since he's met this sannyasi, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his behavior has been very, very strange. <laughs> oh brother, indeed your words are true. I know that he has become disinterested in everything. In fact, he no longer cares for his family and home. I begin to feel and fear for the worst. In fact, I know what is in his mind. My dear brother, what in your opinion should I do? Together, we should go speak with him. We should remind him that he can both perform his religious activities and fulfill his worldly desires here while staying at home. Oh, brother, it is late. He has already gone to take his rest. Can we not speak of this thing tomorrow? No, this is of utmost importance. We should immediately talk to him. Oh, Raghunath, Raghunath, your uncle and I have something to speak with you. It is of the utmost importance. Raghunath. Raghunath, why aren't you answering your father? Oh, he's gone, my son. My worst fears have come true. Oh, don't weep, Govardhan. I'm sure he has gone to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Guards! Guards! <laughs> <laughs> him and bring him back here immediately. <laughs> Following the main roads to Jagannath Puri, the guards quickly caught up with Raghunath Das. Meanwhile at home, Hiranya and Govardhan were engulfed with intense feelings of anxiety. It's been two days already, and there's no word of my son. After all, he's just a tender young boy. Any terrible thing could have happened to him. What's that? I hear something. Ah, must be the guards returning. <coughs> my son! Raghunath! My son! Raghunath, look what you're doing to your father. It's not right to give such pain to living entities like this. My son, you should listen to your uncle. He is very wise and very experienced. If you don't follow his advice, you're only inviting calamity upon yourself. You're so lean and thin. Look at you. Please come, take your bath, take your prashad. Why do you act like this?
Almost four years passed, and Raghunath Das's intense desire to meet with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu grew day by day. When news came that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had again arrived in nearby Shantipur, the 18-year-old Raghunath Das approached his father. My dear father, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is staying nearby in the house of Advaita Charya. So I'm begging you, please give me permission to go there and have the darshan of his divine lotus feet. If you do not fulfill my request, then I must say, my life is certain to leave this body. Hiranya. What should I do? All his devotion is great. <clears throat> Let him go. But we must have him accompany and make him take the accompany of these servants, ensuring that he comes back here on time and very soon. Father? Thank you. My son, I give you permission to go and receive the darshan of Sri Chaitanya oh. Mahaprabhu. Go. Receive his blessing and offer your homage unto him. But I implore you to return here very quickly to us. Please come back to us soon. <coughs> oh, Mahaprabhu. These gods will keep me under close surveillance day and night. How will I be able to get away from their hands? Oh Mahaprabhu, how will I be able to go with you to Jagannath Puri Dham? Somehow or other, I must find a way to escape. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates were staying at the house of Advaita Acharya in Shantipur. Being the omniscient Supreme Lord, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could understand the mind of the young Raghunath Das. And after accepting his service for seven days, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed him appropriately. sinful and fallen, and therefore I am always deprived of your association. Somehow or other by your mercy, today I have walked into the path of your glance, but already providence is conspiring to lead me away. Raghunath, Raghunath, be quiet and calm. I think you should go back to your house and do bhajan there. It is not so easy to cross this ocean of material suffering. It is not child's play. Simply by acting a madman, one will not be guaranteed a success. So you should return home to your budget, do home and do budget in your home. Gradually, if you follow my instructions, step by step, I'm sure Krishna will bestow his mercy upon you, and you will reach the far ocean, the far shore of this material existence. O oh, Raghunath, don't be a marketavayagi, a monkey-like renunciant, only to cheat the people and for show. <coughs> I think for the time being, you should return home. Do, en enjoy this material world in a benefiting way, but do not become attached. O oh, Raghunath, externally you should behave like a materialistic man, but internally you should always <coughs> have deep rati for the lotus feet of Sri Sri Radha and Sri Krishna. And in this way, Krishna will definitely bestow his mercy upon you. In a short time, Krishna will definitely bestow his full blessings upon you. 
someone who has Krishna's mercy, he will always be able to overcome all obstacles. So now, I am going to Vrindavan, and when I return to Jagannath Puri, at that time you should make such a trick that you can meet me there. Krishna in the heart will inspire you how to do this. If one has Krishna's mercy, all the obstacles go far away, and he can very easily accomplish anything. So be calm and quiet, and practice your bhajan, and we'll meet in Jagannath Puri. Raghunath Das returned to Saptagram, a thoroughly changed person. He managed his father's estate and accepted all the responsibilities of a worldly businessman. Govardhan Majumdar arranged his marriage with the most beautiful girl of that time, and thus surrounded by material opulence, Raghunath Das behaved like a first-class materialist. Seeing this, his father and mother became very satisfied. They were unable to detect that inwardly he was completely renounced. Raghunath Das successfully concealed his inner feelings until two years later when news arrived that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had returned to Jagannath Puri. How long must I go on without you? I'm at my wit's end. I don't know what to do. Now it has become a daily affair. Raghunath Das runs away, and we do our utmost to catch him and bring him back here. Yet still, he is undeterred in his attempt to escape. Yet he has not yet been successful. Yes. I didn't want to admit it, but anyone can see how son is becoming more and more mad. Completely mad. We must do something immediately. The situation has become so serious. We should bind him with ropes. <laughs> Our son has, has at his disposal the opulences of Indra, the king of heaven. His wife is more beautiful than an angel. If these beautiful allurements will not capture his mind, then what can we speak of an ordinary rope? I'm afraid that he has given his heart to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has accepted him as one of his own. I'm afraid it will be very difficult to keep him here any longer. It is impossible. How to control a madman of the moon like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? The next day, Raghunath Das, in the company of many servants, went to meet with Nityananda Prabhu, who was performing some kirtan with his associates in the village of Pani Hati. Dancing and chanting along the banks of the Ganges, Lord Nityananda appeared more effulgent than 1,000 rising suns.
Look, my lord, it's Raghunath Das offering obeisances from a distance. Raghunath! Raghunath! You are a thief. Come here! Right here, Baba. Come here. Now I shall punish you. You are just like a thief. Instead of coming near, you stay far, far away. Today, I shall inflict some severe punishment on you. Oh, today, I shall inflict the punishment. You shall have a great Mahotsa, great festival. this now. I belong to a community of cowherd boys and we like to have nice big feasts on the bank of the river. Then tonight we shall come to your house and also take Jaya Satinam Jaya Gura Jaya Satinam Jaya Gura Jaya Satinam
Anit and Anger Prabhu. I am so wretched and fallen. But nevertheless, I have the desire to attain the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In this respect, I am just like a dwarf who is trying to touch the moon. I have tried many, many times to lead my household life, but every time I have failed. I have failed every time. Oh Nityananda Prabhu, I know that no one can attain the shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without your mercy. So, although I am not fit for that mercy, and although I am greatly afraid to ask for it, still, I am begging, please, bestow this benediction upon me. My dear Raghunath Das, since we have arranged a feast for all these beautiful Vaishnavas here on the banks of the Ganges, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has personally appeared. But you should know that he has appeared specifically for you to be shown mercy on you. So, all the impediments which were presently there, they have now been dissipated. <coughs> And you should also know that very soon, in the near future, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he will take, he'll give you shelter, and he'll place you under the care of Saruk Damadhan. And you'll be known as one of the most intimate associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, all Vaishnavas assembled, please shower your mercy on Ragnar Das. Shri Ragnar Das Ki! returned home and eagerly awaited for the opportunity to escape to be arranged by Krishna. From that day on, the young Raghunath Das would not enter into the interior of the house. At night, he would take rest on the Durga Mandap. Nearby, a group of guards would keep watch to make sure that he did not try to escape. One night, just now, all the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from Godadesh, they will be traveling to Jagannath Puri Dham to have darshan of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the pretext of going to see Jagannath Ratiyatra they will go there and take his association perhaps I could go with them alas they are so famous I know that if I went to accompany them I would be very easily caught ha go Hago, when will your soft golden form again become the object of my vision? Oh, oh, good day, good day. <laughs> Raghunath Das, my pajari has left, so I have come. I want you to meet with him. 
and induce him to resume the deity worship. Can we go now? <laughs> yes, Gurudev. Gurudev, we can go immediately. Yes. Oh, Gurudev. Without anxiety, you can return to your home. If you give me permission, I can go alone to the house of that Brahmin. I will induce him to resume his service. And when he agrees, I will send him immediately to your house. And you can meet with him there. Very well. Do not delay. Ha! <coughs> ah, now my opportunity has come. I am out of the house. I have no guards, no soldiers with me. Now I can escape and go and see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If I go by the main road, then for sure the guards, they'll find out that I'm missing and they will catch me and bring me back before the sun rises. But if I go by the jungle path, they will not be able to find me. Oh Nityananda Prabhu! Oh Gurudev! Oh Vaishnavas! Oh Sadhus! Your blessings are infallible! Back at the house of Raghunath Das, the watchman, being unable to find him, immediately went to inquire about him from his spiritual master. When Yadunandanacharya said that Raghunath Das had already taken his permission and returned home, there arose a tumultuous sound and everyone cried bitterly. Meanwhile, <clears throat> Raghunath Das was racing through the jungles from village to village in the direction of Jagannath Puri Dham. He did not care to eat or sleep, for his mind was concentrated upon the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Eating only once every four days, and occasionally taking rest in some barn or cow shed, Raghunath Das made rapid progress. After only twelve days, he arrived in Purushottam Kshetra Jagannath Puri Dham. When Raghunath Das met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Lord was sitting with his companions, headed by Swarup Damodar. stronger than anything. By the grace of Krishna, the ditch of you have escaped from the ditch of material life, which is like a hole unto which people have passed stool. Your uncle and father are also like worms in that stool, because they consider the happiness of material enjoyment to be all in all. Still, they are pious men, and they give charity to the brahmanas, yet they are not pure Vaishnavas, Raghunath. They are Vaishnav prayer, or they are resembling Vaishnavas. Osuru. Such persons are blind like your uncle. They, and such persons are bound to take birth after birth in this material world. Srub Damada. This is Raghunath. Please accept him like your son and servant. Now I have three associates named Raghunath. So he shall be called the Raghu of Saru. Sarupa Raghu, the Raghunath of Saru. Oh Mahaprabhu, what you have ordered, I accept. Oh Govinda, Raghunath has faced very much hardships and austerities to come here. So until he's regained his health, please look after him. First, Raghunath, you go and take bath in the sea. Then you may go and take darshan of Jagannath there. Then you can get his mercy. Then afterwards you come back to us and take prasadam with us. Oh, Swarup Damada, my dear Prabhu, I have to tell you something. Although I have given up my household life, actually, I don't know why I've given up all of these things. I want to ask Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what is my duty? What is my real duty? 
Om Mahaprabhu, Raghunath Das will not speak a word before you, but he has this to say at your lotus feet. I do not know what is my duty or what is the goal of my life. Please give me some instruction from your lotus mouth. Raghunath, I am upon his group Dhammada as your instructor. Whatever is regarding Sadhya and Sadhan, he knows perfectly. In fact, he knows more than me. But still, if you are anxious to hear some instructions from me, then listen very carefully with great faith and love. Rogana, do not talk about mundane subject matters. And do not listen to such people who engage in those talks. Do not eat palatable foods, palatable foodstuffs. And do not dress richly like a like do not dress opulently like a rich man. Always give respect to others, but never take any respect for yourself. O Raghunath, most importantly, you always be immersed in the Hari Nam. You always chant Nam Sankirtan. And within your heart, always remember Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan and serve them with your Manasa Seva. This is my instruction in brief. If there is anything further to be added, the details, you may approach my Saru. <coughs> Being placed in the care of Swarup Damodar, Raghunath Das began to serve him in his sadhak form and internally in his identity as Rati Manjari, Raghunath Das rendered Antaranga Seva to Swarup Damodar, who was of the identity of Lalita Saki, Shimati Radharani's dear most friend. When Govardhan Majumdar heard that his son was staying in Jagannath Puri, he sent a large sum of money and some servants to attend to him. Raghunath Das used this money to entertain Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at his residence for two days every month. to invite me every month for two years now for Prashadam. But now he has stopped his practice. What has caused this? O oh, Mahaprabhu, Raghunath Das has reconsidered his activities. He is thinking in this way. I have invited Mahaprabhu and I am serving him. Things that I have purchased by money that I have received from materialists. The only thing, thus my mind has become impure. The only thing I have gained is a mundane <coughs> reputation. Mahaprabhu knows that I am a great fool and that I would become a rose if he did not accept my invitation. So he comes, but I know that he is not pleased by this. This is true, what Raghunath, done, what Raghunath has done is true. <coughs> when one accepts the invitation and accepts the food from materialistic persons, one's mind becomes polluted. And with a polluted mind, how can he remember Krishna? And how can he do smaran of Krishna's leela? It is quite impossible. I have seen that Raghunath Das has given up the practice of begging the Sima Dwa of Srimandir. This is very good, very good. By simply begging alms at the Srimandir, one's behavior is like that to a prostitute. Simply he is thinking day and night, Oh, this man has come. How much will he give me? This man, yesterday he did not give me anything. But maybe today he will change his mind. I think this is not proper behavior. I think it is best for him if he goes to the free prasadam distribution booths in Puri. And there he does not need to deal in worldly affairs. And he can chant with a peaceful mind. He can chant his Harinam. He went to Ananda Bazaar for some time. But now he goes where all the shopkeepers throw the rotten rice. The Talangi cows assemble there to eat. And Sri Raghunath Das goes there and takes whatever the cows leave behind. He brings it home, washes it, and takes it with a little salt. His, his renunciation is very, very wonderful, exemplary. I think today we must go and watch him in his activities.
if one is actually purified in mind by spiritual knowledge, he is understood, he is not this body. And if one has realized the Parabrahman, Sri Krishna himself, then that person gains everything. Then why should he behave like a debauchee and try very carefully to maintain this material body? Hey Raghunath! Hey, what are you doing? <coughs> Every day you get such nectar and you're not sharing it with me? <laughs> such nectar that you are having every day and we are so many you are not sharing where is your character <laughs> I have tasted many many varieties of prasadam but as yet today I have yet to taste such wonderful foodstuffs Martin, wait don't take this it is not fit for you I mean, every day I respect so many varieties of prasadam, and th this nectar is available and you are stopping me? Well, Raghunath, come close to me. I have something very special to give you. My lord, what is that? This is Giriraj Govardhan. <coughs> he is directly the bigger heart of Sri Krishna himself. If you worship it very carefully, he will definitely give you Premadana. He will bless you with Prem. The worship for this is very, very simple. What do I have to do? Every day you only need simply water and tulsis with Raghunath. You take the jug of water and eight tulsi manjaris. That tulsi manjari is very, very soft. And on each side of that flower should be two leaves. If you do this with great faith, love and attention, Krishna will definitely bless you with Prema Bhakti very, very quickly. ago, Shankarananda Sarasvati returned from Vrindavan. At that time, he gave this Govardhan Shila and this Gunjamala to my Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Oh, how he worshipped this Giraj Govardhan. While chanting Hari Nam, sometimes he would hold this Shila to his heart and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Sometimes he would hold it to his eyes <coughs> or sometimes on his head and he would wear this Gunjamala around his neck Oh This Sheila is never dry because he is always moistened by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's tears of love I can understand that by giving me this Govardhan Shila, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has granted me a residence at the foot of Govardhan Hill. <coughs> and by giving me this Gunjamala, he has offered me at the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. After the disappearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from this world, Raghunath Das Goswami went to Vrindavan, and there on the banks of Radha Kund, he became even more absorbed in bhajan with the most intense feelings of love and separation. He would sit all day in the blazing sun, tasting the cool nectar of Harinam. He was oblivious to the external world, 
One day, Sanatan Goswami came there to Radha Kund. Oh boy, oh brothers, just see this Raghunath Goswami, Das Goswami. <laughs> on my order, he's taken up residence on the, on the shore of the lake that is very dear to Sri Madhi Radhika. Now he's practically given up, eating and sleeping. Just look. Every day he pays 1,000 Dandavat Dhanams to Vrishivan Nandani, to Vrajendra Nandana, and to all their associates, and to all the places of their pastimes. To Keshi Gat, Keshi Gat Ki! Jai! Nandagon Ki! Jai! Vamsi Vat! Jai! Kusam Sarovra? Yeah! Graham Sarovra? Yeah! Radha Kun? Yeah! Kun? Yeah! Yudhi Govardhan? Yeah! And to all the, all the associates, Nanda Baba? Yeah! Yashoda Mai? Yeah! Baladev Bai? Yeah! Sri Dham? Yeah! Lalita Shaki? Yeah! Shaki Shaki? Yeah! Rupa Manjari? Yeah! He's also offering 2,000 Dandavad Pranams every day to all his gurus and to his Vaishnavas. He takes bath in Radha Kun three times a day and he spends three hours a day discussing the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He never <coughs> chants less than one lakh Harinam a day and in this way he's engaged 22 and a half hours a day in bhajan with only sleeping for one and a half hours, sometimes not at all. Oh, who is this Kishori coming? She seems, she appears to be more beautiful than Lakshmi Devi herself. <laughs> Mati Radhika came and personally sheltered Raghunath Das Goswami from the heat of the sun while she herself became drenched in perspiration in performing this austerity for her dear most devotee. When the sun's heat died down, she smiled gently and then she disappeared. Raghunath, Raghunath. Sanatana. What kind of budging is this? What? what is your intention? What? To serve Sri Mati Radhika or to accept service from her? What do you mean, Prabhu? Previously, Sri Krishna came to protect you from two tigers. At that time, I told you to build the budging kutir. Oh. Now you have not. Now you have not built, and now Sri Mati Radhika herself has come to protect you from the heat of the sun. Sri Mati Radharani came herself. Oh, I am so wretched. What a great offender I am. Sri Mati Radharani came before me. And I did not even see her. I did not serve her. But instead, <coughs> I accepted her service. Oh Prabhu, certainly I will follow your order. And I will try very hard not to give inconvenience to Aswamini ever again. Go and build a bhajan kutia and do bhajan peacefully. <laughs> yes Prabhu, I will follow your order. And I will not follow my wicked mind ever again. Oh, this mind is so wicked. What can I do? This mind is always cheating me. Somehow or other, I must persuade him to help me attain my goal of life. Oh, mind. Oh, my dear mind. My dear brother. I fall at your feet. And with such sweet words, I am begging you, please. Can you do just one thing? What is that? Just give up all pride. Give up all pride and just develop intense and incessant rati for the lotus feet of Srila Gurudev. 
develop great love and affection for this Braja Dham, Vrindavan Dham. Just develop love and affection for all the bridge buses and all the Vaishnavas and the Brahmanas. With great honor and love, chant your Diksha mantras given by Guru and have great love and respect for the chanting of Hari Nam. And most of all, become very, very much attached to the shelter of Sri Sri Kishore Kishori, Radha Krishna. I don't know what is religion and what is not religion. So my dear mind, I'm asking you to do this. Just render profuse service at the lotus feet of Radha Krishna. And at the same time, just remember that the son of Sachi Mata, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is none other than the son of Nanda Maharaj. And always remember that our Gurudev is very, very dear to Mukunda. <coughs> <clears throat> oh my dear mind, if at all you desire to attain residence in this Brindavan Dham, and if truly, if truly you want to attain the direct service of Sri Sri, Radha and Krishna, then life after life, with great love, just remember and offer your pranam again and again, again and again at the lotus feet of my Swaru Dhamada, at the lotus feet of Rupa Goswami, at the lotus feet of his brother Sanatan Goswami and all of their associates. Because they have attained the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Oh my dear mind, I want to give you some good advice. Immediately, you should give up the association of that prostitute of contemptible mundane talk and also you should give up hearing any talk of liberation mukti which is just like a tiger who devours one's very soul and more than that you should also give up attachment for the lotus feet of Lachmipati Narayan Oh mind, this sort of bhakti will take you to Vaikuntha, so don't do this thing. Instead, just always worship and serve the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. If you do this thing, they are so kind. They bestow upon the devotees the precious jewel of Rati for their lotus feet. Oh, lust and anger and greed. They are like a band of dacoits who assail one on the open road of material life. They have come and they have bound me around the neck with the ropes of wicked, wicked deeds. Oh, what can I do? What can I do? Someone save me. Oh, mind, in this condition, you should call out upon those great, great Vaishnavas, those great devotees who are the protectors of the path of bhakti. Certainly, if you call out upon them, they will come and they will save you from this band of dacoits. <coughs> oh mind, you like to think you are practicing sadhana, you are doing your bhakti every day. And you like to think that you are very purified now. Oh yes, I am doing bhakti and now I have become so pure, I am a pure devotee. But what is this? You are simply bathing me and you in the trickling urine of the great donkey of deceit and hypocrisy. Why do you do this to me? Instead, you and I, we should both bathe in the nectarine ocean of praying for the divine couple. Oh my mind! How do you expect that that pure Krishna Prem will come into my heart when that shameless dog-eating outcast woman is dancing there? Who is that shameless woman? She is that desire for false prestige. How can I get her out of my heart? She's dancing in my heart again and again and she will not go away. My mind, 
I know how we can get rid of her. If we simply serve those great generals in the army of Sri Krishna, those pure devotees, if we just serve them, they are very powerful. They can easily take that shameless woman and throw her out. And then immediately, by their mercy, they can initiate the flow of immaculate Braja Prem within my heart. Oh, my dear mind. You should always remember that Sri Krishna. You should always remember that Sri Krishna. Which one? Oh, Giridhari. Giridhari Krishna. Why? Because if you remember him and in utter humility, with grief stricken words, you simply beg, Oh, Giridhari Krishna, please save me. Then he will remove all obstacles and give you inspiration. What is that inspiration? Giridhari Krishna, he will give me the inspiration to render service at the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. Oh, mind, just remember, just remember that Krishna Chandra, Vrindavan Chandra Krishna, he is the beloved of my Swamini, Srimati Radhika. And Srimati Radhika, she, she is my mistress. And Lalita Devi, who is Lalita Devi? She is the most, the peerless friend of my Swamini. And, oh dear mind, don't forget Vishaka. Vishaka Devi, she is the Shiksha Guru in all of the affairs of Yugal Seva. And my dear mind, don't forget Giriraj Govardhan. Who is Giriraj Govardhan? Giriraj Govardhan is he who will grant the darshan of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna and intense rati for their lotus feet. Oh mind! Every day you should drink the Panchamrita, the nectar of the archan of the divine couple. Every day you should drink the nectar of Sankirtan, glorification of the divine couple, of Dhyan, meditation upon their lotus feet, and also of Nati, the offering of obeisances to them. And always worship Giriraj Govardhan. He is so merciful. Oh mind, never, never give up the service of Srimati Radhika. Rejecting all else, only remember her lotus feet. Srimati Radharani is so great. Her beauty, it vanquishes the beauty of Gauri, Rati and Leela. She conquers the pride of Sati, Lakshmi and Satyabhama with her great fortune. And she smashes all the pride of the chaste damsels of Rajabhumi, headed by Chandravali. Why? With her great power to bring Krishna under her control. Oh, Shimati Radhika, you are the most dear to Sri Krishna. Oh, mind, if you can simply follow all of these instructions, then all of your endeavors and all of my endeavors and all of our sadhana will definitely be crowned with success. Raghunath Das was loved by all the Vrindavasis. <coughs> and one fortunate Dhanvasi would go to Radhakund every day to bring Raghunath Das some buttermilk in a leaf cup. One day, <coughs> Oh Baba, oh Baba, I brought you some buttermilk. Please accept it. Oh, thank you. Oh, my dear friend, this leaf cup is much larger than the cups that you usually bring. Where did you get it from? Uh, uh, those larger leaf cups are only available from nearby Saki Stali. From where? Saki Stali. <laughs> Saki Stali? <laughs> you come from the party of Chandravali. <laughs> you came here to take Krishna away from my Radharani. I'll show you. <laughs> 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 In this way, Raghunath Das Goswami passed many years 
deeply absorbed in the service of Radha and Krishna within his mind, while externally following all the practices of an ordinary sadhakam. Raghunath Das Goswami is Rati Manjari, an eternally liberated associate of the divine couple. He appeared in this world out of his causeless mercy just to show us by what method we can attain the ultimate goal of life, Radha Dasyam, divine service at the lotus feet of Shimati Radharani. In his final days, Raghunath Das Goswami, considering himself an abject failure, offered pitiful prayers like flowers at the lotus feet of Rishabhanu Nandini. I had so many hopes, I had so many hopes, but one by one, they have all vanished. And now, everything is lost. All of the columns, unto which I was grasping, they have disappeared. And now I have no shelter. This is my final condition. What will happen to me? I will certainly lose my life. But if Shri Shri Radha and Krishna would just, if they could just sprinkle upon me only one drop, only one drop of the nectar of their praying, then all of my desires will be fulfilled. What to speak about swimming in the ocean of praying? If I could just get one sparkle, one sprinkle of that praise upon my head or upon any of the limbs of my body, then certainly I will be able to get that nectar which could sustain my life. That very thing for which I left my home many, many, many years ago. When I was a boy, I ran away from home to take shelter of my Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he left me. Then, I took shelter of my Swarup Damada. Oh Swarup Damada, you were so kind to me. But, oh Swarup Damada, you could not tolerate separation from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And you also left me. Then when Gadada Pandit also left me, I came here to Vrindavan Dam to take shelter at the lotus feet of Srila Sanatan Goswami. I have never seen such a merciful personality as Sanatan Goswami. Even though I was unwilling to drink it, he forced me, he forced me to drink that Prema Bhakti which Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. That Bhakti which causes one to renounce all the attachments of this material world. And that devotion which awakens within one's heart spontaneous love for the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. Oh, Sanatan Prabhu, where are you? And now, my life and soul, Rupa Goswami, now Rupa Goswami has left me also. Who can describe the mercy of Rupa Goswami? He was so kind to me. He was so kind to me. He always took care of me with great love and affection. Because I had taken Ketra Sanyas 
I would always stay here at Radha Kund. Yet still, regularly, he would come and visit me here. He would show me his beautiful writings. His writings were so beautiful. He would do this on the text of having, pretext of having me proofread them. When I read those writings of Rupa Goswami, oh, Lalit Madhav, Ujjwal Nilamani, Vidagda Madhav, oh, I would cry so many tears. All the pages would become soaking wet, but still, I could not stop crying and I could not stop reading. Whatever I have not directly received from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Swarup Damodar, my Rupa Goswami, he gave to me. Until now, I have somehow or other maintained this life. But now Rupa Goswami has left me. I cannot live for a moment longer. Hey Sri Matiji, now I have nothing. I only have you and your kund. It, it is very difficult for me to live for even one more moment. Oh Sri Matiji, if you do not bestow your mercy on me right now, right now, then I will just give up this body. I will give up this body. What need do I have to stay in this Vrindavan? What need do I have to stay here in Vrindavan? Oh! Without my Rupa and Sanatan, this land of Braj, it has become just empty and desolate place. Govardhan Hill, Gidiraj, seems like a huge python, and Radha Kund appears to be like the mouth, the gaping mouth of a ferocious tigress, just waiting to devour me. I cannot live for one more moment. You may say to me, you can tell me, oh why don't you maintain your life by offering prayers to Sri Krishna? But I will say to you, what is the necessity of Sri Krishna? Oh Radhe, if I cannot have your service, please, oh Radhe, be merciful to me now. Tavayavasmi, Tavayavasmi. Na jiva mi toya bina Jeeva kya hai radhe tu Na ya maam chhanan tukha Oh Shumati Radhika I am only yours I am only yours I cannot live without you Oh Shumati Radhika Knowing this Please Please Give me the shelter of your lotus feet and appoint me to your service. In this way, Raghunath Das Goswami lamented bitterly in separation from Shimati Radhika until his advanced age when he entered into the Nitya Lila of the Divine Couple. Prayojanacharya Srila Raghunath Das Goswami Ki Srila Raghunath Das Goswami Ki Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandhari Ka Girid Hari Shri Shri Radha Vinod Bihari Jiyo Ki Jaya Jaya Shri Radhe
my heartly blessing to the persons devotees who have played this very beautiful marvelous drama i think it is not only a drama it has touched the hearts of all the pure devotees i think my coming to ashadiya is so successful i want to this that <coughs> the mission of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu touch all your hearts you should try to take all the instruction that i wanted to go by this manas shiksha and that you saw and heard from there is prem prayers and brahmacharya in a very simple and pathetic way you should try to be <coughs> a pure devotee like ragnar das goswami and try to <coughs> follow his up all instruction really if you want to do bhajan i have come only to inspire all these things not for anything else so my heart will bless and to you all my classes in in this place now it has been completed here i want that you should be like haridas hmm, haridas thakur or not that person i don't want anything but i want to give you these things these instructions and you should try to follow sincere then you see that very soon like rabnath das goswami you will be pure devotee and radha krishna and chaitanya mahaprabhu will spend his best mercy upon you if you are doing so i will be so happy i will always try to help you <coughs> i want that you should all be like prem prayojan and so many so many are i want that you should all be like that then i will hear and i will be very proud of you all that all that very hmm? huh? one five kilos chaitanya mahaprabhu also is sprinkled with mercy shrimati radhika i want that you should be like ragunath das goshami or radhe tavai vasmi tavai vasmi na jivami tvaya bina like it all i will never keep my heart in my life or radhe if you have no mercy if krishna is giving mercy but if there is no your mercy then i don't want to live in prajap i don't want to live in govardhan i don't want to serve krishna even Oh, Radhika, you should be merciful. This you should take in your heart and try to develop your heart. I have given some seed in you. Now it is your responsibility to sprout it and it to change in a very beautiful tree. That is Krishna. So that you should be very proud. I have nothing to show more. Now when I will come next year, I will take all these points of silver of Narada's Goswami of Manasikha. They are so beautiful models. This is right there. Go, Pramod. Hari. If I have done anything wrong, please forgive me. 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 I should be excused for this. I never come here to give any trouble, any problem to any devotees. But yet, I see that I have given so much trouble and so much problem to some devotees. But I don't want. This is also a huge problem. 
I have come only also to help them in all respects. But unfortunately, they are not understanding this real fact. One day, they will realize certainly this, that Narayan Maharaj is our friend and also he wants our benefit. So they will realize one day. You should have no uh, established marriage in her in any, in any form, any before him. Don't criticize anyone. You should be tolerant. You should tolerate and be a very good one of five people. Be. That I want. You should honor all. You should see every bad Krishna and Radha. And that's wrong, that left me. Your heart, then I will be so pleased to you. My heartly blessings to you, my heartly blessings to you. Go, Sanana.